In this example, we're asked to determine if the given infinite series converges or diverges, and if it does converge, we're asked to find the sum of the series. Looking at the formula for a sub n, if we perform partial fraction decomposition, we'll have a telescoping series, which we can use to determine if the series converges or diverges. So for our first step, we'll perform partial fraction decomposition on a sub n. So we'd have four divided by n times the quantity n plus two. Notice how we have two distinct linear factors. So we'll have the sum of two fractions, where we'll have the constant a divided by the first linear factor of n plus the constant b divided by the second linear factor of the quantity n plus two. And now we'll clear the fractions from this equation by multiplying both sides of the equation by the LCD of n times the quantity n plus two. Notice on the left, we have n over n that simplifies to one, as well as n plus two over n plus two. So we have four equals. Now on the right, for this first product, notice how the factor of n simplifies out, which would give us a times the quantity n plus two. And for the second product, notice the factor of n plus two simplifies out, so we have plus b times n. And now to find the values of a and b, which will give us our partial fraction decomposition, we'll select convenient values of n. Notice if we let n equal negative two, we have a zero here. So if n equals negative two, this would give us the equation four equals, we'd have a times zero, plus b times negative two, so we have four equals negative two b. Dividing both sides by negative two, notice that b equals negative two. And now to find a, we'll let n equal zero. Notice when n is zero, b times n would be zero. So that would give us the equation four equals, again, n is zero, so this would be a times two, or two a, and if n is zero, this term would be zero. Dividing both sides by two, notice how we have a equals positive two. So going back up to our infinite sum, this means we can now rewrite the series as the sum of a divided by n, which would be two divided by n. And since b is negative, let's write this as minus two divided by the quantity n plus two. From n equals one to infinity. So we use this form of a sub n to help us determine if this series converges or diverges. And because we have a telescoping series, we'll expand the terms in the series. Notice when we do this, many of the terms will simplify out because they're opposites. So our goal will be to find a formula for the partial sum once we find a simplified formula for the partial sum, we'll determine the limit as n approaches infinity of the partial sum, and if this is equal to L, a finite value, then the series converges to L. So for the next step, we'll begin generating terms in our series to find a formula for the partial sum. So the partial sum, S sub n, is equal to, when n is one, notice how we would have two divided by one or two, and then minus two over the quantity one plus two, or two thirds. Plus, when n is two, we'd have two divided by two or one, minus, again when n is two, this would be two fourths or one half. Plus, when n is three, we'd have two thirds, minus, this would be two fifths, plus when n is four, this would be two fourths or one half, minus, here we'd have two sixths or one third. Of course this continues. When n is five, this would be two fifths, minus two sevenths, and so on. Now let's find the last two terms of our series. The last term would just be two divided by n 
minus two divided by the quantity n plus two, and therefore the previous term, instead of n, we'd have n minus one. So for this group here, we'd have two divided by n minus one minus two divided by, well if n is n minus one, we'd have n minus one plus two, which is n plus one. Now see if we can recognize the pattern. Now see, now let's begin simplifying to see if we can determine the simplified formula for the partial sum. Notice here we have minus two-thirds and here we have plus two-thirds. So these two terms would simplify out. Now if we stop here for a moment, notice how if we wanted to find the partial sum of these first three groups, we'd have two plus one and then we'd have minus one-half minus two-fifths. Looking at the remaining terms, notice how the two and the one are never going to simplify out. So we're left with these two fractions here and these last two groups. Now if we continue simplifying, the next two terms that would simplify out would be minus one-half plus one-half. So now looking at just the first four groups of the series, if we wanted to find this sum, notice how we have the two plus one again, and the remaining two fractions are again the last two fractions in these last two groups, minus two-fifths, minus one-third. Let's try that one more time. Let's simplify again. Notice how next we would have minus two-fifths plus two-fifths. So now if we find the partial sum of the first five groups, again we have the two plus one, and the remaining fractions are again the last two fractions from these last two groups. So that's our pattern. So if we continued simplifying, the only two terms remaining would be these last two fractions and these last two groups. The remaining fractions would all simplify out. Which means the simplified formula for the partial sum, S sub n, is equal to two plus one, and then we'd have minus two divided by the quantity n plus one minus two divided by the quantity n plus two. And now we'll take the limit as n approaches infinity of this partial sum. So the limit as n approaches infinity of this partial sum, we'll notice as n approaches infinity, these, for these two fractions, the denominator increases without bound, and therefore these two fractions approach zero, and therefore this limit is equal to two plus one or three. And therefore the infinite series converges since we have a finite value and the sum is three. So sometimes it can be challenging to find this formula for the partial sum. So my suggestion is to simplify two terms at a time, and then try to recognize the pattern, because recognizing the pattern is key to finding the correct formula for this partial sum. I hope you found this helpful.